I give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Mr. President, Mr. President, we would like to thank Stephanie Williams for the information she provided on the situation in Libya. We are grateful to her for the contribution she personally made into the process of Libyan settlement and wish her every success in future. We have been consistently advocating a peaceful settlement of the Libyan crisis using the political and diplomatic means. We note uh, that for the first time uh, since uh, the destructive Western aggression against Libya, the very sad 10th anniversary of which we're going to commemorate this year, the Libyans now have uh, a realistic chance of uh, gaining the long-awaited peace. We are convinced that all international players who have influence of various Libyan forces, forces should try and push them towards constructive interactions so as to find compromise solutions to the um, remaining problems. And that is exactly what we were guided by when we hosted in Moscow in November 2020. The uh, chairman of the House of Representatives of Libya, Mr. Saleh, and then in December of the same year, the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs of the Government of National Accord, Ms. Sialu. We uh, reaffirmed uh, our position on that occasion, and our distinguished guests shared them. And the position is that the Libyans themselves are to lead and implement the settlement process. And this applies to the political, military, economic, and other tracks. We welcome the fact uh, that the uh, armed the confrontation has been replaced by negotiations. At the same time, the situation remains fragile. Uh, we see stalling in the process of implementing of the provisions of the ceasefire agreement, which was signed in Geneva on the 23rd of October last year, within the framework of the Joint 5 plus 5 military commission. We call upon all Libyan sides to display restraints and adhere by the commitments that they undertook. So as to strengthen dialogue amongst the military, the discussion of mutual confidence measures is continuing, and this includes in the civilian area. And we welcome the steps taken in order to um, unfreeze the air and road communications between area, various areas of the countries. Such uh, steps will help normalize the life of uh, ordinary Libyans and also help with the humanitarian assistance. We are following very closely the Libyan Political Dialogue Forum. I would like to underscore yet once again that uh, whatever steps are being taken in various areas of the settlement should uh, not be just uh, form formally agreed, supported uh, by the Libyan sides, but they also have to be uh, including the principle of inclusivity. It is the only principle will uh, will ensure that the peace process is lasting and effective. And this was... Uh, the viewpoint from which we will be viewing the outcome of the work of the forum and the 5 plus 5 commission. What uh, has happened when it's stated on paper looks impressive, but the most important thing here is to make sure that the plans are braided organically into complicated Libyan realities. Now, given the leading role played by the UN in international efforts to help uh, with the Libyan settlement, we welcome the appointment and which every success to the new special envoy, Mr. Jankovic, who will have to use all of his extensive diplomatic uh, experience here. We think that his main objective will be not attaining formal planned or controlled indicators, but rather creating the atmosphere of trust amongst the widest possible spectrum of Libyan political forces. All the more so since uh, some of them, including some participants in the forum, are critical of the current state of affairs. 
An important element of uh, stabilization of the situation is a dialogue to ensure that there is a stable functioning in the oil sector with the understanding that the natural resources of the country belong to all of the citizens. What is uh, also needed is restoring order in the financial and economic area, once again being guided by the principle that um, the financial assets belong to the Libyans including those which are uh, co contained in the frozen accounts. And in this regard, we'd, li we'd like to express our concerns by the information that um, some Western, in particular European companies, are enriching themselves from the Libyan assets in their safekeeping. I thank you. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation.